Hello, extraordinary child of God. Now, if you're looking to transition your life from where you are to where God wants you to be, then you are in the right place. And if this is your first time visiting my channel, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscription button as well as the notification bell so that you don't miss another episode. Now, there's an old German legend about a very educated and highly successful man named Faust, who just so happened to be very dissatisfied with his life, which caused him to make a pact or a deal with the devil. And this deal required that Faust exchange his soul for the unlimited knowledge and worldly pleasures that the devil had to offer. But apparently Faust never truly considered the impact this type of deal would have on his eternal destiny. He didn't realize that this was truly a bad, bad deal. So in today's episode, we're going to talk about making deals. I'm always looking for a good deal. And as a parent, I want my children to understand what good deals look like. So lately, I've been trying to explain to my Savannah what a good deal really looks like. Now, for instance, at school, she wants to use her money to purchase, let's say, a $2 cup of noodles, when in fact, she can take that same $2 and purchase a pack of six cup of noodles if I take her to the grocery store. At school, there was a book fair, and there's a particular book she wanted to purchase. So I asked her, how many times do you plan on reading that book? And she was like, mm, probably one time. Then I asked her, wouldn't it make more sense for us to check out that same book from the library versus spending money on a book that you only plan on reading one time? So I made a deal with her. I told her, if you keep your money, I'll take you to the library to check out that book. And she was hesitant for a second. And I'm like, huh? But after a while, she saw the value of the deal I was offering her and she decided to keep her money and go to the library to get the book. Now, as you probably know, the word of God is full of lessons and stories we can learn from. And in 1 Samuel chapter 12, we find a great lesson on deal making. Because in this chapter, we find the people of Jabesh Gilead being offered a deal that is out of this world. And believe me, it's not out of this world in a good way. It is out of this world in a bad way. Because the people of Jabesh Gilead are looking for a savior. Apparently, they don't have what it takes to protect themselves from other nations and they know it, so they find themselves in a position where they have to find some other people to protect them. And what they're desiring is nothing absurd. Like anyone else, they just want to live in peace. So when the Ammonites come and camp up against them, the people of Jabesh Gilead begin to feel uneasy, and they get together and they come up with a plan that they believe will preserve their lives. And so they have a meeting with Nahash, the leader of the Ammonites, and they present to him what they consider to be a good deal. They tell him that they will gladly serve the Ammonites and submit to their rule if they agree to enter into a peace treaty with them. So Nahash listens to their offer and he's interested, but he wants to make a counter offer. And his offer is that in exchange for peace, the people of Jabesh Gilead will not only serve them, but as a token of their commitment to the agreement. They will allow the Ammonites to pluck out their right eyes. Now, what kind of deal is that? So the people say, OK, give us some time to see if there is someone else who is willing to make a deal with us and save us and give us seven days. If no one shows up in seven days, then we accept your deal. So in essence, if the people couldn't find a better option, they were going to settle for a deal that would bring them harm and leave them disabled. And I'm sad to say that a lot of times we will consider or enter into deals with the devil because like the people of Jabesh Gilead, we don't see a better option. And the majority of times God will not reveal to us the better option because he wants us to exercise faith. Faith that tells you never settle. Faith that causes you to plead for God to reveal to you a better way. And faith that will cause you to stand even if another option never presents itself. Because as Christians, we must never make deals with the devil, no matter how tempting the upside may appear to be. I mean, think about the three Hebrew boys. They were offered a deal 
And that deal was to have their lives preserved if they would choose to dishonor God by bowing down to a graven image. But faith caused them to refuse the devil's deal, even when they saw no other option. And what's interesting is that the devil always offers us those types of deals. Deals in which there is a little upside and a whole, whole lot of downside. Yet many people will accept the deals without giving it a second thought. And the reason is because the devil, unlike in this story, tends to hide the downside. Now, when the people of Jabesh Gilead left their meeting with Nahash, they just cried and wept because they didn't know what to do. Obviously, they valued their eyes. And at the same time, they didn't want to have to go to war with the Ammonites. What they didn't know was that God behind the scenes was already raising up a deliverer on their behalf, even before they had the meeting with Nahash. And that deliverer was the soon to be King Saul. And Saul came on the scene right on time because he organized a small army and he slew the Ammonites. And the slaying was so bad that the Ammonites were scattered to the point where you could not find even two of them together. And thank God the people of Jabesh Gilead had sense enough to stall before they made the decision to enter into a bad, bad deal with the devil. So the next time you find yourself in a position where the devil is offering you a deal, whether he presents it as a good deal or as a bad deal, regardless, you know that any deal he has is a bad, bad, bad deal. So when he offers you the temporary pleasures of fornication, remember, that's a bad deal. When he offers you security in the form of a relationship that is hurting you, bad, bad deal. When he offers you a position that requires you to compromise your morals, bad deal. And even when his deal seems irresistible because there appears to be no other way out, never forget that God always shows up for his people who honor him and don't engage in deals with the devil. Let me pray for you. Dear Heavenly Father, help us to have wisdom. Help my friend who's watching this video right now to have wisdom and discernment enough to reject the deals the devil tries to offer them. God, we ask for your blessing. We ask for your covering over our lives. And God, please help us never, ever to engage with the enemy. In your name I do pray, amen. So let me know what you think about this, this whole making deals and dealing with the devil. Tell us your experience by sharing your comments below. And if you're interested in digging a little deeper and finding out some more of the backstory, you can go ahead and click the link below, I'll add it which has a downloadable um, study guide that goes along with this video lesson. So until next time, remember to like, share, and subscribe. And remember that you are extraordinary through Christ. God bless, and I'll see you next week.